Hi everyone, welcome to the new course on chemistry that is solid state. In the first view, you have already learnt the three physical states of matter. Those are solids, liquids and gases. Matter means anything which occupies space and has mass. And based upon the characteristics of these matters, we will classify them into solids, liquids and gases. And there you have learnt the properties of liquids and gases in detail. But in this chapter you are going to discuss the remaining state of matter that is solid state. Okay. So what are the characteristics of solid state? How the solids are classified? And what are the different concepts related to solid state? And what are the applications of those solids? So before going to the solids, first we must know why there is a necessary to study the solid state. As you know, there are different types of solids. By knowing the properties of those solids, we can modify their properties and they can be helpful for human beings. For example, the conductors like copper, iron, these conductors can be converted into superconductors by bringing certain changes. This can be done when we study exactly about the characteristics of those solids. Then only we can modify their properties by bringing small changes and thus we can convert them into the good thermal and electrical conductors. Okay. And also they can be act as insulators, okay, semiconductors, conductors, all those properties can be modified by, by studying the solids properties. Now, first of all, we will study what are the general characteristics of solids. As you already learned about the general characteristics of solids in the first few only, once again I will repeat what are those characteristics of solids. So first property of solids is they have definite mass volume and shape okay one of the property of solids is they have definite mass volume and shape so why they have definite mass volume and shape this is because the particles which are present or which constitutes solids are closely arranged the particles closely arranged. So since the particles are closely arranged, they have definite volume and shape. Then why they have closely arranged? Why the particles are closely arranged? Because they have strong intermolecular forces. Okay. Due to the strong intermolecular forces, the particles are closely arranged. It is because of they have strong intermolecular force. And the next one is they have high density. Since they have strong intermolecular force, hence they are closely arranged and hence they have definite volume and shape and they have high density. Okay, because the particles are closely arranged. Hence, the density of the solids is usually high as compared to other two states of matter. Those are liquids and gases. And the another property is the constituent particles are having fixed position. Constituent particles have fixed position and can oscillate about their 
mean position means they won't move from one place to another place okay so they will remain in their original site only but they can oscillate or either to and fro or back and forth okay in that direction they can oscillate remaining in their position only okay means they have fixed position by having fixed position they can able to oscillate in their mean position only okay hence due to this they are rigid and hard the solids are rigid and hard because they have fixed positions means the particles are having fixed positions and can oscillate only about their mean position hence the solids are rigid and hard okay and also you can write many other properties or characteristics of solids such as they have high melting points and boiling points solids have high melting points and boiling points okay so these are some general characteristics of solids you can say the matter some matter are present in solid state some matters are present in liquid state and some matters are present in gaseous state then what is the reason for these different states of matter on what basis we can say the solids are solid and liquids are liquid and gases are gas okay why they are having different states since all they are made up of made up of particles only but different matters have different states this can be explained on the basis of two forces those are intermolecular forces or you can say interparticle forces and another force is thermal force or thermal energy so these are the two forces based on these two forces we can able to explain why the solids are in solids and other states are present in their original states it is because which force is high in the particles between in between particles based on that we can say whether the matter is in solid state or liquid state or gaseous state before that first you must know what is intermolecular or interparticle force interparticle forces means as you know already in solids the particles are closely arranged so in these particles in between these particles there is a kind of attractive force is present and those attractive forces which are present between the particles are said to be interparticle forces and what is thermal energy thermal energy means the energy which is formed due to the movement of particles that means this thermal energy it always keeps particles away from each other means interparticle forces they keeps particles together and thermal energy keeps particles away from each other it is a one kind of attractive force and thermal energy is a kind of a repulsive force as interparticle forces increases the matter will be present in solid state if the thermal energy is high then the matter will be present in gaseous state if the particle forces in between particles the forces are intermediate neither high interparticle force nor thermal energy is high at such condition the particle or the matter is said to be present in liquid state okay so if the intermolecular forces are very high then the particles are said to present in solid state if the thermal energy is very high then the matter is said to be in a gaseous state 
if the forces these forces are in intermediate between solids and liquids sorry solids and gas then the matter is said to be in liquid state so based upon the interparticle forces and thermal energy we can able to explain whether the particular matter is present in solid state liquid state or gaseous state okay remember if the interparticle forces are high the matter is said to be present in solid state if the thermal energy is high then the matter is said to be present in gaseous state if these two forces are intermediate then the part the matter is said to be present in liquid state so this is how we can explain the state of an matter in which state it exists based upon these natural forces which are acting between the particles which constitutes the matter